Thank you very much. It's the first time that I'm here in India, and it was really a pleasure to be with you. I have run a workshop uh, for two days, and I learned a little bit of the behavior and how you deal with access here in India. So I will start my presentation. And I realize that India and Europe has different uh, economics and uh, different healthcare system. It's not the same. And maybe also the culture, the attitudes and behave behaviors are not the same. And this is important to understand my topic and to understand and apply it maybe to your uh, situation here in India. But some things are, are similar. We have tradition in medicine. And one point is that we knew about the evidence. It's often clear, but the reality is different. Why do you do this, uh, what you learn here in the Congress at home? Why not? Then this problem of blame and shame. If you say somebody, you do something wrong, you have a problem. And for this, we have to create a new spirit of safety for our patients. And the most important and difficult task is to change the behavior of doctors. It's really a problem. Maybe we can learn something uh, from the aviation uh, professionals. One point is that you have to get know what's the problem. If you have a uh, an unknown situation, you have to check and to find out what's the problem. That's one point to resolve the problem. The other thing is the problem that have studied the accidents and they found out that the communication is a problem. Most uh, errors are, uh, are related to personal errors and especially for communication. So they started the development uh, crew resource management, and maybe that's also something we can adapt for medicine. They have tools to improve communication and critical situations, and then al they also started to create checklists. The question is how we can manage the unexpected. Sometimes we have to concentrate of incidents and errors that we can change our system and improve our pathways of treatment and uh, operations. And we should synthesize the question of our daily business, how we perform. We should be flexible and we should also respect the knowledge and skills of our collaborators. Fifteen years ago, there was a first book dealing with safety in medicine. It was this book about error is human. And again, I thought maybe we can adapt some points to patient safety for dialysis patients. I will give you a short story. That's the history of a 78-year-old man. He had uh, access creation and came the night uh, for, during the night he had pain and the wound was not checked. And in the morning rounds, when we change the dressing, it looks like this. So, in retrospective, what was wrong in this uh, decision making? Was it a problem of knowledge or uh, attention? A problem of human factors? Maybe a problem of education? So that's we have to address in our daily practice. And if you see the definitions for uh, errors, you see that in medicine we have always adverse events. That's uh, normal. But we have also medical errors because we are planning in a wrong way or we achieve the plan in a wrong way. So at the end we have harm and we have also preventable adverse events. And safety is dealing with this kind of problems. The absence of errors 
and also of preventable adverse events. There are a lot of factors dealing with this problem, starting with the organization and the culture. How is your hospital organized? How are the process of decisions? Then we have contributory factors, the work environment, team factors, individual factors, and task factors, and also patient factors. And we have also, okay, care delivery problems, unsafe acts, errors, but we have also barriers to prevent these errors. And it's really rare, but sometimes it happens that we have an incident. Also, we have a cascade of evolution in, in patient safety. We have the normal people, they have skills, knowledge, and competences. Then they will get ill and get patients. But also these patients have skills, knowledge, and competences. And the professionals either have skills, knowledge, and competences. And if you see, Patients have adverse events, that's normal. We have to live with this fact. But we have to check for it and we have to react if we address a problem. And this we need basic research, epidemiologic uh, knowledge, clinical research and also health service research to improve this area here. In end-stainal real disease patients we have a lot of critical issues, medication is a problem, diagnostic errors, for instance, for unexpected hand ischemia, wrong side surgery is very rare, vascular excavation problems with infections, needle disconnection is a problem, needle infiltration, and also falls after dialysis. That's quite common in our group of patients. And we can check and pass by different aspects. The patient is also responsible for some of his uh, behavior. He can read, and today they use the internet to get more and better informed. We can instruct him to uh, the vein preservation problem. She can check for the vascular access function and he has also some responsibility to discuss uh, the quality and control in dialysis. The nurses is a very important uh, person because he is very close to the patient. He can observe, he can, she can discuss. Uh, she is a really caregiver and he is, she is also involved in the cannulation uh, problematic. The doctors have also their perspective. They have an ability to act, how they act, how they uh, anticipate the problem. They have knowledge and evidence, and they have also skills. And this should be put together to improve the process. We can learn from the aviation how we can improve this by individualized training. We have sources of e-learning, simulation, and OR teaching. Because we have a lot of points that we should address. We have a change of our social expectations, short time in training, working time restriction. That is a problem for the education. We have political accountabilities, clinical governance, and interprofessional learning as a problem or a, a chance also, and also regulations in our profession. Team training is key. It should be interdisciplinary and interprofessional, and especially communication and leadership is demanded. We use checklist, and of course, we need some standardization in the workflow and in sometimes a team mixture so that we have no routine. We have instruments, for instance, the mortality and morbidity conferences or the critical incident reporting system. You can do case uh, presentation, 
evidence for the interventions, screening for points at risk, and improvements. And this involves all the system here, the organization, the contributory factors, the care delivery problems, and the defense. So you have to check for all these aspects in such conferences. There is other, not only morbidities, but there you can also check for good performances. It's also interesting to study this and to address this uh, issue. If you can check uh, uh, operation that uh, performs quite well, so you can analyze and find out why this works so good, and that you can take your conclusions. We put this together in a book about this topic related to patient safety. It is a structured, uh, they are the chapters are very structured about uh, recommendations and also time uh, tables and figures. We have different topics, some about preoperative evaluation. I don't go to the details. We have illustrations, for instance, that uh, preoperative duplex ultrasound, use, use a tunique to check the veins and the size of the veins, and you can also measure the distensibility to have an idea how good your fistula will work. During the procedure of access creation, you have different uh, points to address. The safety in the OR, you have uh, to check that the patient came in time for the access creation, and you have also the whole uh, story of uh, clinical examination and uh, ultrasound examination in advance. We heard already a little bit about safety in radiation. We illustrated it just to remind people what they have looked for, distance, time, uh, protection, and even the protection of the doctors is very important. The same for the anesthesiology. We have a lot of monitoring uh, possible and we can address these points. Of course, the technical aspects should be addressed. You, have, uh, you need to know how you perform your uh, fistula safe. We have heard, just heard about uh, the monitoring and surveillance program. I don't go into the details. And one a critical point, nosocomial infections in dialysis, a huge problem, and we should address this every time, every day, that people are aware of this really severe complication. So what can be our uh, strategies? We have to act, we have to plan, to do, and then to check and to change. And important is that we don't blame people, but that maybe we should also have some sanctions so that people know how to perform in our hospitals. We have to address the infrastructure to maybe to make some changes uh, in the infrastructure. We have to reflect the processes and we have all the time to check the outcome of the patients. And here I think in the access problematic, we have not a lot of good follow-ups of our patients to have good results and to, that we can uh, answer our questions in the daily business. With this, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Matthias. Wonderful, wonderful. I think this is...